<laughs> Holy shit. What did the cat say? Um, so chill that he choked out a female comic at a comedy store and Mitzi paid up to... Excuse me? <laughs> Is that true? Did that actually happen? Cat, <laughs> can you please can you please explain? I, I, I've not heard this story. Holy shit, is that true? When did that happen? I've been a Rogan fan for a while, bro. I, I've never heard this, of him choking out a fucking... What is that? A female comic? Cynthia Levin. Hold on, let's, let's Google this. This is mad, bro. Cynthia Levin. Joe Rogan. Okay, cool. Oh, my God. You are right. Holy smokes. Look, look, look at the first thing that comes up when I, when I search for it. Let's see. There's a news article. I don't want to go on ready to check it out. Let's see. No news article about it. Nothing. Okay, let's take this off. This off. One, baby, one second. Let's see what this is saying here. Oh, my days, bruv. I had not heard this story ever in my entire life. Let's see what this is saying. Bish bash bosh. Oh, wow, there's a person here. Oh, there's a video too. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> okay, cool, let's watch this. Holy fuck, I've not heard this story in my entire life. Okay, cool. This is courtesy of the... As you can see there, right? You can see? The Joe Rogan subreddit. The title's there. Comedian claimed Joe Rogan sold her years ago. Let's play and see what this is saying. But the um, uh, uh, an odd story. So um, I don't really share this, but I'll share it anyway. Wait, but so your name is on the wall? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and so, uh, so another funny story, which was a terrible story. To be fair. So, so um, this is years ago. This is before I moved to New York. Right before I moved to New York in 2000, I was hanging out at the store. I was riding around on somebody's skateboard, like just fucking around on the skateboard. So I was like, hmm, like a dick. And then, and then I was just like, had the skateboard under my armpit, and I was like walking towards the back on the side patio. And I, um, Joe Rogan, you know who he is, whatever. Yeah. He started to mess with me, and um, just like kind of like do this elbow thing and i just like did it back thinking he was playing around and uh it then he did it again really hard and then my teeth shook in my mouth and i went oh this guy's fucking serious you know yeah. wow. and then we ended up like getting into a thing like yeah. it just wow. it escalated Whoa. into him putting me putting me into a headlock and then ultimately <laughs> a pretzel where i thought i was gonna die like wow. actually thought i was gonna die and everybody's just watching like nobody was doing anything about it Holy shit. Can somebody explain to me how how does a man get into a barging contest with a woman on a skateboard? How does that even like escalate that way? Like <laughs> Did they have like a prior relationship where they were always like physical? How do you go from like seeing somebody skateboarding and fucking around and then suddenly it turns into you fucking trying out fucking your jujitsu moves on it? And so and so I was just like, all right, dude, you win. You win, realizing that well, I was dealing with a freak show, you know. And so did you forget to tap? You never tapped. <laughs> you should have yeah, tapped. Yeah, you're right. You should have Well, this was my that tap. Was I go, I go all right, dude, you win, because I had no throat anymore. I had no voice. He had smashed my larynx. Oh, my God. So anyway, it was a really good time. But the yeah. point is, the point of the story is, is that, you know, I like uh, my friend. He was doing the pilot for Fear Factor on you. No, he wasn't yeah. even there yet. It wasn't <laughs> even then. He was on news radio at the time, oh, and okay, things sorry. were working out for him. So anyway, but I, I ended up just like, my friend was like, you have to go to the police. You have to put a, you know, a, uh, what do you call it? A, um, file a report. Yeah. And, 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 but, you know, but you restraining, restraining order. order on this person. And which me, again, I wasn't the person to be like, you know, because I had been talking about like how you have to deal with your childhood yeah, shit or yeah. it's going to keep coming back at you. Yeah. I had been beaten before. Nick, mate, I, I, like n not, not to, I, I'm not going to, um. I'm not going to take any credit for this. I'm not using any front lighting. It's just a, this is just the screen re reflecting back into my face. <laughs> There's no light in here, friend. <laughs> Boyfriend, childhood. So I just, you know, I didn't know 
that this, you know what I mean? You just, this is showing up You're again. Like, yeah, just walk away. It's well, fine. yeah, in a sense, I was sort of like, you well, know, I was just like, uh, you know, my legs. I actually saw Adam in the original room. I was like, Adam. I told him what happened. I was shaking. My legs, I, my legs were like uh, gone underneath me. Like I was just wasn't yeah. existing. Wow. People after it happened, people were shaking my hand, giving me high five, like you know, and I'm like, for what? You never tapped. Well, I, I did end up, I guess, coming across the patio, but I didn't know it. That's funny. That's point, funny. Which That's is when he put me in the pretzel after that because he was like, oh, fuck you, you know, kind of thing. But I didn't what? know because you know how you're, like, you're saving yourself, and I didn't. I was like in, almost in a blackout. I guess I reached my hand up, and I took his face, and I threw him, but I didn't know this. I was told that I did that. What the hell? Oh, so shit. weird stuff. Anyway, point of this whole story is, is that after all this stuff, and I go to the police, and I do all this stuff, and I, and I basically, I didn't want to file a report. I didn't want to do, I just didn't. I just thought, uh you know but I, I was like okay you know and I did it and and then they were like you know Joe's people were calling the comedy store and because they were worried about it coming out and he's like you know well what you know just um they were like Joe's you know they want you to drop the you know this restraining order and I was just like I'm like listen I'll drop it if I get my voice back because I still wasn't able to talk damn and so then I went Mitzi paid for me to go to the hospital and get my they put like a camera down my throat and all this shit and they said, yeah, it's smash larynx, but it'll, <gasps> it'll heal. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Joe Rogan crushed this woman's <laughs> esophagus for daring to skateboard around her. For daring to skateboard around him, sorry. Oh my God. Yo. It'll, it'll heal in time. So like three weeks later or something like that my i got my voice back so anyway so i ended yeah. it up and i've never told this like i don't really tell the story but i'm just telling the story because of the the, the mitzi part of it the aspect of it which is is that <laughs> um you know i'd be at the club and he'd be at the club and we weren't really like buddying up do you know what i mean i wasn't yeah <laughs> not that's his buddy fair. yeah that's yeah so mitzi but mitzi she's like just oh you two when it, why don't you make up you two just make up, you know. Yeah. He goes, go on, go on. You two probably just want to kiss each other. Like yeah, she really of. thought that we were probably trying to like we wanted to fuck each other. But the reality is, I had no interest in this person ever before or after. You know wow. what I mean? Zero. So I mean, I didn't really before, speak to him prior to that. He's a pretty handsome fella. Before though, come on. Uh, no, thank you. So Back sorry. Then with all the hair though, come on. All right. So sorry. Anyway. Wow. But anyways, yeah, so then we did. We ended okay. up having a conversation, which he tried to pretend like I started it, and obviously that wasn't the case, and he oh got boy. it. And yeah. he told me why he did it. Not really why he did it, but yeah. he, had, he had an excuse. Tall girls. He has a problem with them. So anyway. Oh. So that's, anyway. Shit. I didn't, I don't Good think, warning. I know it's funny. Yo, I don't, I don't know what to say about that, mate. <laughs> that's a lot to take in. It's the first, first bit of info. I've never heard that story in my life before, so big up, cat for bringing it to the surface as per usual i have the best chat in the world so big up all you guys um wow let's let's take it for face value let's imagine this is true i do do you guys think this is one of those regrets that joe rogan has the same way how when he used to say nigger <laughs> and he compared black people to gorillas and shit do you think it's the same thing because i remember when that happened when when that whole happy, thing happened with the n-word stuff right he came out and said oh um, this has been something that's been on my mind for a while. It's been re le rest it rested heavy on me. I'd never really liked the fact that I said it anyway. I'm glad it's out in the open. But obviously, he didn't want to address it himself, innit? Because why would you? So, but he was glad it did finally come out in the open, though, when it did. I wonder if this is going to be the same thing. If this is one of those stories that happened in the past that he kind of is secretly ashamed of, but he's never wanted to really like say anything about because he doesn't want to put it out there. Um, but the only thing that I would say is the only bit of a weird thing about it is that that whole tall girls thing because I I, I don't because saying he has a problem saying Jerry has a problem with tall girls also maybe implies that he has an issue with women in general which I don't think it's true because if I'm not mistaken he has all girls right all daughters um he's pretty sure he has a stepdaughter too and a wife so his house is full of women and whenever he's on the podcast I don't know if you guys have recognized but whenever he's talking to a woman he always seems to be way more effeminate and way more 
um, he assumes he's also less confrontational when women are on. He seems to kind of acquiesce and kind of bring his tone and his and his kind of over personality down to their level for the most part. He doesn't necessarily strike me as somebody who doesn't who can't really handle a woman with a strong opinion or whatnot. He seems to actually like it. I mean, like he's he's a fan of Roseanne, for instance. You know what I mean, he loves Roseanne. Um, so I don't think that's the case. I wonder what happened then, back then. Or maybe, or maybe he was like that before. Maybe he was one of those type of guys that legitimately had issues with women before. Then he changed over time because maybe back then he wasn't, you know, who he was now. Because they were saying this was way, way back in the day before even Fear Factor happened. But what an insane story! Like imagine just fucking around outside the comedy store with a skateboard as a comedian, doing what you're doing best. Right? I mean, just falling around, having a good time, shooting the shit sharing a burger or a donut or whatever with your colleagues and then suddenly you know you get into a barging contest with joe rogan who's clearly way bigger than you way more muscular than you and he ends up fucking fucking around and getting you into a flipping rear naked choke <laughs> honestly man this is some psycho shit god almighty but do you think this kind of, this is a bit of a reach, but do you think this kind of explains why somebody like a Joe goes out of his way not to talk about Brian Cannon and Chris D'Elia? Because you know you have this sort of stuff in your locker as well. Because that always, again, I've mentioned it many times in here, but that's something that always never really sat well with me. I was like, like these guys are meant to be, especially Brian Cannon, meant to be Joe Rogan's best friend. And ever since that whole R-word allegation happened, it's as if he doesn't exist anymore. Do you know what I mean? He's never been on the show any he's never been on the show. He doesn't talk about him the same way he used to talk about him before. They rarely hang out based on social media. Because, you know, these guys again, you say, Oh, they they see each other outside of social media. Yeah, but they post everything about each other on social media, especially when it concerns with Joe because he's basically a free clout token. And he completely, completely, it feels like, you know, deleted them from his brain. Do you know what I mean? Um I wonder if this is the reason why, because he has some other things in his wardrobe or in his closet that he doesn't want to come out. Do you know what I mean? Maybe, maybe, but big up Cynthia Levine, man. Fuck you know. What an absolutely horrible, horrible story. <laughs> like legit. That's the, the that's legit like that's legit traumatizing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Imagine. And then, and then you're seeing your abuser every single day becoming one of the most successful comedians in the world. Like, <laughs> life isn't fair, man. Honestly, life is not fair. Fuck me, man. <laughs>